Hello all and welcome to Stingray Toms, Florida. Today's video is basically a look at some of the places I visited in 2021. It appears that I traveled to over 80 attractions, parks, small towns, and historic sites during the year, but don't worry, I won't cover them all. What I am doing is three things. Firstly, I'll show you some of the best photos I took in my travels, like the ones I'm doing right now. Secondly, I want to give you a sneak peek of a few of the stories I'm in the process of researching and plan to produce soon. And thirdly, I'm going to show a short series of photos of alligators, turtles, and butterflies, since it seems those are the wildlife I ended up capturing the most. Hopefully this makes a fun and interesting video. Enjoy! When I look back on my years, I'm always surprised at how many places I've been. Some are planned long ahead, but many are decided upon in the short term, especially when traveling with friends. I take a lot of wildlife photos, so that's why you see so many of them here. I do take a lot of photos of attractions and parks, but being focused on history, I tend to mostly show scans of the documents in the archive. So on to a brief preview. I have many ideas for upcoming videos, some of which will only take a little bit of research, but some will take quite a lot. It's all a balance when trying to put out regular videos, but that's life. Here are four subjects that I plan to explore. In no particular order, the first is the history of sugar production and its impact on Florida tourism. This is another one of those subjects that doesn't scream tourist, but it actually has a strong connection. I won't cover that now, but the photos I'm showing are only two of the historic ruins of commercial sugarcane production in the state. And of course, many of them are open to the public. These two are the Kruger de Pacer ruins in New Smyrna Beach and the Yuli ruins in Homosassa. But not only is there a large 19th century component to Florida sugar production, the industry is still one of the most valuable in the 21st century. I've already touched on that topic in this video. Next, I will continue to look at the peninsula's indigenous population, both those that call Florida home today and those that were here for thousands of years before Europeans set foot on the land. One of the most obvious aspects of the pre-Columbian cultures are the middens and mounds that dot the land. I want to share the beauty and historical importance of places such as the Safety Harbor Mound at the northern end of Tampa Bay and Turtle Mound at the north end of Canaveral National Seashore. Much like the sugar ruins, these two remarkable places are only a tiny sample of middens and mounds that help tell the remarkably powerful story of the many indigenous cultures. Another subject that can also touch on the culture of indigenous people is that of Florida's longest river, the St. John's. I spent quite a lot of time this year exploring this highly important waterway. The river begins in the Fort Drum Marsh west of Vero Beach, winds its way through numerous lakes in central Florida, is fed by several of the state's most powerful springs, and ever so slowly makes its way to Jacksonville and into the Atlantic. In its 310 mile or 500 kilometer length, it drops less than 30 feet or 9 meters. Truly a remarkable natural feature in a state that excels in unusual natural features. Not only has the St. John's been a vital commercial importance of Florida, but it was the first way tourists could explore the interior of the peninsula soon after the U.S. took possession of the territory in 1821. And finally, I want to go to the circus. This year, I continued researching Florida's connection with it. I've previously shared parts of the life of John Ringling, of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus fame, who lived in Sarasota for many years. But this year, I took a look at the Ringling Brothers circus train that now resides in Williston, these rail cars were the living quarters of the greatest show on earth. I also spent a quiet afternoon at a cemetery in Tampa that is specifically for showmen and women who worked in America's circuses, sideshows, and carnivals. 
Then I went back to Gibsonton and Riverview to explore the Showman's Museum, one of the most important repositories of circus and sideshow history in the country. Considering the other previews, it's probably not surprising that these three locations are only a small part of the places that tell the story of the circus in Florida. So hopefully these are topics that you can look forward to. Of course, there are many other subjects that I hope to cover. I'll continue on my series of Florida's official state symbols. Remarkably enough, there are still several to do, including the flower, marine mammal, salt and fresh fish, pie, beverage, and honey. Yes, honey. But now let's take a look at more photos of animals. Like every other photo in this video, these were all taken in 2021. I just thought it'd be fun to see some alligators, turtles and tortoises, and butterflies. We'll start with the gators. If you're a fan of Florida's official state reptile, I've recently done a video on it that shares some surprising facts. By the way, as I do in all the animal videos, I've put the location on each of the gator photos so people know where they can easily find gators in the wild. As for turtles, any lake or river is likely to have some, and just look for wildflowers if you want to find wild butterflies. And now on to turtles and tortoises. As a non-scientific rule of thumb, a turtle is a shelled reptile that is generally adapted for life in and around water, while a tortoise spends nearly all of its time on land. As for butterflies, I'm sure everyone is familiar with these phenomenally beautiful insects. One place that I try to visit every year is the Butterfly Rainforest at the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville. 
It's one of the largest collections of butterflies and moths in the country. Contained in a screened structure with tropical plants, water features, finches, and even little quails. I've mixed photos of the rainforest butterflies with those I found in the wild. But the rainforest raises exotic species, and I've never bothered to figure out what they all are. I'm way too busy taking photos when I'm there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed being able to visit all these wonderful places in the state. Much of the time when I'm exploring, either alone or with friends, I start thinking of new subjects I can research and share on this channel. Thank you once again for watching another of my videos. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Florida's tourism history. Stingray Tom's Florida, traveling through time around the Sunshine State.